Um, this is Stephanie Malowski with the North Rockland Chamber of Commerce. Um, and we have Senator uh, James Scoofus here uh, speaking with us at our at our monthly uh, breakfast every every month on Tuesday morning, uh, on the second Tuesday of every month. Um, at you know from 7 45 to 9 o'clock in the morning we have our our breakfast meetings and you know at this time you know we like to have um, someone from the community come and talk to us about you know what's going on in North Rockland and um, you know how how we've uh, supported our businesses our small businesses and also you know to join up for uh, member updates and, and chamber updates. So welcome Senator Skoufis. Thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's great. It's great to be back. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, we and and like I mentioned, we'd love to hear about your accomplishments for uh, 2021 and 2022, including you know the phenomenal uh, no increase in in our in our local uh, our property taxes and um, and also I've I've noticed uh, you do work with business person the business pres preservation uh, registry. Um, could you talk a little bit about that, Senator? Yeah, sure. So I'll start with the first that you mentioned. And, uh, and, and actually, before I even get to that, I want to thank uh, your, your organization for what you do in North Rockland. You know, I, I think that if people didn't have an appreciation for uh, the value that a chamber brings, which they should have the entire time, they certainly do uh, over these past couple of years during the pandemic when chambers of commerce were providing uh, a lot of really essential support to, to its members. Uh, it's, it's great to be back. Um, and uh, on the first item, uh, look, you know, my, and I told this to the school board the other night uh, when I came down and I uh, spent some time at one of their meetings, but my, my first, you know, eight years or so, uh, seven to eight years in the state legislature, uh, while I can point to a lot of uh, successes and things that I'm proud of and proud to have partnered on uh, with folks, um, really, you know, my greatest professional failure was not being able to deliver uh, a long-term sustainable solution to the crisis that the North Rockland Central School District and its taxpayers uh, have been facing uh, as a result of the Mirant uh, debt situation. And each year, uh, you know, Ken Zabrowski and I would, uh, when we were both in the assembly at the time and really leading this charge up in Albany, uh, we felt sort of like Don Quixote tilting at, at windmills uh, we'd come back and, and fight the fight and we would leave it all on the field every single year. And, you know, we would chip away, you know, we get one shot, a quarter million dollars extra here, a half million dollars extra here. And uh, certainly every bit helps, but uh, we, we just simply weren't able to get uh, the support uh, from other stakeholders uh, at that time, the Senate and, and the governor. I uh, for for a longer term a solution. We have to come back to this every year, um, and and even the one shots weren't weren't sufficient. So, um, you know, as as each year passed by, I uh, uh, the crisis uh, grew, um, the cliff or not even the cliff, the the second or third cliff, because there have been uh, uh, a couple of times the district has flown off uh, a financial cliff already. Uh, but the next cliff was uh, was fast approaching, and I uh, and you know then in 2018 I, I ran for for state senate, moved there, and started in 2019 uh, in the senate, and I uh, and you know it was really the last couple of years that we were finally able to uh, to to deliver what North Rockland had long been waiting for and has long deserved, uh, and so for example just this past budget. Uh, that passed uh, a few few months ago. Um, North Rockland saw a 14.6 percent, uh, sorry, 14.6 million dollar uh, increase just over last year in state aid, uh, and you know that that amounts to an enormous uh, 28 percent increase. Um, in addition to that. Uh, there was um, a new pot of money that was set up uh, these past couple of years. I, I, it's more modest, but um, it, it, the pot is for uh, a few school districts that are dealing with large tax certiaries. Uh, and I think it's four districts that got some money from this uh, new program. Uh, so on top of that 28% increase in general state aid, 
I, North Rockland got an additional $1 million each of the last two years from this state pot. Uh, and that has, make no mistake, you know, people think that, uh, that state government has, you know, no bearing on local property taxes. Oh, it's the school property tax bill, it's the town property tax bill. Uh, but the, the single biggest way that we in state government can keep your school property taxes down is by delivering state aid that is needed. And it's just, you know, simple formulaic math. The more money you get from Albany, the less money you need from your local property taxpayers. Uh, and in this case, you know, it's desperately needed and has been in, in North Rockland. And so for the past three budgets now, uh, thanks to this the dam breaking and this state aid finally reaching North Rockland, the past three school budgets have seen a 0% increase uh, in the North Rockland Central School District for property taxpayers. And, you know, that's, that's really unheard of. Uh, you know, you'll occasionally, these past number of years, you might see one zero percent, uh, but to have three, I've never seen that before in any school district. And it really, um, it, it speaks to, uh, I would argue, the, the stewardship of the, the, the school administration and the school board. Look, they've been, they've been dealt for the past 20 years uh, a really tough hand. Um, and they've been crying out and advocating and lobbying for for this extra aid that we've all been talking about. Um, and now that they have it, you know, they uh, there there may be some school districts where they might have gotten greedy. Okay, we're getting this extra state aid from Albany, but we still can go up to the two percent property tax cap, and we get a little bit more. Uh, but they haven't done that, and they've kept it at zero for for the past three budgets, and they should be uh, applauded for that. So so that is look, you know, I. I I lost sleep uh, countless nights those you know seven eight years that you know I was not able to working with um, our partners um, do what we've been able to do the past couple of years um, and you know I've come to love North Rockland as a community I've spent so much time in the community uh, and keep in mind it's not just the past four years like I said I, I've when I was in the assembly I represented part of North Rockland too so it's been a decade that I've spent time uh, in in North Rockland and, and on these issues and. I, it pains me uh, that I was not able to, to deliver those first, you know, eight years or so. But, um, but you know, now North Rockland is in uh, a, an enormously improved financial state, uh, thanks to what we've been able to do. And, uh, and look, you know, I'm, uh, along the way, we've had some other excesses uh, in, in that, you know, we got extra money a number of years ago for a full day kindergarten. In North yeah. Rockland, that was something that we fought long and hard for as well. Uh, and so, you know, I understand that people can rightfully and understandably become disillusioned with government sometimes. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that in North Rockland, um, at least the state level, uh, thanks to a lot of people's advocacy, uh, you know, we can point to some fruits, significant fruits of, of our labor. And I was proud to be, be a part of that. Um, you mentioned the historic business registry, uh, the other item uh, in your opening. And you know, this is a really interesting new program that was set up by uh, the Office of uh, Parks and Historic Preservation, and uh, brand new just this year. Uh, and each state legislator um, is, uh, at least for the Senate, I don't know what it is for the Assembly, but at least each state senator uh, can uh, nominate two businesses uh, in our districts that have been around for uh, at least 50 years and have you know really been uh, an incredible community partner that deserves recognition uh, on this new historic registry uh, historic business registry and you know it's on uh, you know and look there are thousands if not many more than thousands of uh, new yorkers people who visit here who in their travels like to stop at historic places uh, in the mm -hmm. communities that uh, they're visiting and, uh, and so on the park's website, there is a new page with a map and pins uh, that designate all of these new uh, historic businesses. I, and so, so yes, you know, I've, I, I've nominated my two. We just made an announcement on the first, uh, Brotherhood Winery up in Washingtonville, which is the, uh, the oldest people, it's hard to imagine, but right in our backyard is the oldest winery in America, wow. uh, in Orange County, in, in Washingtonville. And so I just, you know, shared that news with them and 
I, I, and, you know, gave them the, uh, the swag and all that stuff that comes with um, being on the historic registry. Uh, but that's something to keep an eye on uh, in North Rockland and, uh, you know, certainly reach out to, to me and uh, your other state legislators um, with, with nominations and ideas for who should be on that registry for next year. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Scooby. Because, and this is why these, you know, these talks are, are so, um, you know, good and, and important because, you know, not, not a lot of people would have, um, you know, known about this program and everything. And, and, you know, to your first points, um, you know, what you've done with, for the North Rockland School District um, is amazing. I've met with um, Chris Felicello, the superintendent of, of schools several times. And, and even before Chris came on board, Ileana Eckbert has been such a pillar in our community um, and done so much for the North Rockland schools. And um, just recently, they, they uh, released a survey to the parents um, in the school district on how to, you know, how they would like to see um, the, the the funds spent um, on their children, and I and I think that's you know amazing, um, especially you know with last year's events and and mental health issues. Um, you know, it's 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 great to to be able to see that the funds go um, you know where they're most needed. Um, so thank you again for that. And yeah, the state aid helps, and we'll take anything we can get. <laughs> so so thank you for that. And um, and then to the business preservation, I can already think. Um, and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, Sparky's <laughs> is 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 um, you know just. Uh, popping out in my head because they've been yeah, around Sparky's diner yeah um and and they've been you know they've always given back to the community and and they you know definitely an historic landmark that i think yep. a lot of, um are would be surprised to see you know in the heart of new york um you know um you know so here in new, in in what I well what I call downstate <laughs> because we're you know a lot of uh, if you're in the city you consider us upstate but but we're really not so so it's it's very close to um to the city um so thank you you know thank you for giving us information on that as well and um you know I also you know part of my dismay you know I um I, I know we've heard about the redistricting and um and and we're not and I and where you're going to be um next year um and so maybe you could talk a little bit about that because not many people are aware of why that happens and and what's happening and no it's not your fault <laughs> so <laughs> yeah no I was, I was actually gonna bring it up if, if you didn't so I'm glad you yeah. did and yeah it's I, I think um, people are, most people are still very confused about, you know, who's my state legislator, what's happening here, you know, all these different maps, what's going on. Yeah. And so the, the long story short was that the, uh, after a lawsuit was, was filed, a court, um, a court directed, I, you know, they called them a special master. Basically, it's a, uh, some professor from the University of Pittsburgh came in and redrew all of our maps. Uh, the congressional map was struck down uh, by the court um, in in a, in a very close four to three uh, decision um, uh, for gerrymandering. Uh, the state Senate map uh, was not struck down for gerrymandering. It was struck down on a purely technical matter, which but frankly was very frustrating and, and made no sense, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and so uh, this special master, this individual came in and redrew all of the maps. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that uh, North Rockland um, was, uh, you know, drew a pretty short straw, in my opinion, um, both from my perspective personally, but also, you know, objectively putting myself aside. Uh, I desperately wanted to keep North Rockland. Uh, North Rockland was in, remained in the Senate district uh, of mine in the legislature's map that we drew. Uh, and there's a reason for it, and it's because I advocated very strongly to keep North Rockland together and in this district. I um, and you know it's obviously, as I said, a community that I've worked very hard on behalf of and and with. Um, but the uh, the the final map uh, that was drawn by this individual, I split the Senate district that I currently represent, our Senate district, into five, uh, which um, was quite unexpected. And I uh, and I think it uh, I think we had the most slicing and dicing of any Senate district in the entire state, unfortunately, um, with the five uh, uh, breaks that uh, that resulted. 
And so in North Rockland, uh, ha the Havistraw um, uh, section of North Rockland, the town of Havistraw and its villages uh, are going to move into uh, Senator Elijah Reichland Melnick's district who currently represents the balance of Rockland County. Uh, so Ramapo, Clarkstown and um, I, and you know, I'm, I'm blanking on the last, uh, the, the last remaining town. Um, but I, I, he, he'll be representing, I, I, he'll be representing Haberstraw I, and uh, starting in January. And then Stony Point is actually uh, thrown Orange Town, of course. Uh, and Stony Point is thrown into a, a Westchester-based district. So it's uh, Northern Westchester and then it just crosses the river and grabs Stony Point, which I think is absurd. Um, so I, that's what North Rockland will be in the new state Senate maps. Um, I will be running uh, for re-election in an exclusively Orange County-based district. Uh, about half of the district I currently represent, half of the district is new, the Western part of Orange County. Um, and I, and look, it breaks my heart to to come January not be representing uh, North Rockland any longer. Um, it's uh, it's certainly the largest disappointment from redistricting um, as it pertains to me. I but you know certainly I will continue supporting the community from just north. I uh, and I know the two state senators uh, who will be uh, who will have the new jurisdiction. Um, in Stony Point and Havistraw, and they're both excellent state senators. And on any North Rockland issues, um, look, I know the community in and out after 10 years at this point, and uh, I'm going to be supporting their efforts and, and the community uh, from my new perch uh, up in, in Orange County. So I will certainly miss the community, but um, I won't be going anywhere as far as being a friend and a supporter. Mr. Yep. Scoopis, uh, yeah, we'd love to connect with them sooner rather than later, just to. Uh, get a, you know, a little lunch and learn together or something to that effect. Yeah, I'm sure you, they'd love to. You know, the, the name of the West, the, the senator from North Westchester or? Yeah, it, his, his name is Peter Harkum, Pete Harkum. Okay, awesome. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and Elijah Reichland Melnick, uh, who represents Orangetown, Clarkstown, Ramapo currently, he, he's very familiar with North Rockland issues because prior to him running for state Senate in 2020, he was my legislative director in my Senate office. Nice. And so he worked on a lot of these North Rockland issues with me as part of my team. And so he's not coming in uh, to this, this new role uh, blind. Uh, he's, he's quite familiar with the, the issues, the unique challenges. Uh, and, I, and I think that's, that's good news for, for North Rockland. Yes. No, 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 absolutely. And and thank you again for that information. You know, it definitely sheds a lot of light on, on what was a murky area. Um, even, you know, even a Google could be overwhelming and not not very um, uh, conducive yeah. um, to to, you know, finding out local information all the time. So um, it's definitely good to know um, the real story from the source. <laughs> and um, so I really appreciate that and something I appreciate um, from, you know, being uh, in North Rockland and, and you know, being a, a, a smaller community. I grew up in the Bronx, so not as much access to information over there as we have here. So I'm really appreciative of that. Um, and and also, um, I in 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 my you know research, I also noticed that you are um, chairman um, of committee on investigations and government operation. Um, so I, I thought that was pretty interesting, and I was impressed with that. Um, you know, as part of your accomplishments, um, you know, being so, excuse me, but but you know, young <laughs> um, and, and able to accomplish that. Um, I just love to just hear a little bit about that. I if you have if since yeah, we have sure, a uh, absolutely. So. Uh, this is a role, I uh, chair the investigations committee that I, that I took on in January 2019 when I moved over to the Senate. And we, we revitalized the investigations committee. Previously, uh, the investigations committee wasn't doing investigations. <laughs> uh, nice. Since I took over as chair, we have been. Um, currently, uh, we have an ongoing open investigation into uh, this past winter's um, 
uh, utility price surging uh, that took place. Uh, Orange, I mean, it was across the board um, awful, but Orange and Rockland wasn't quite as bad as Central Hudson, which is the other part of our Senate district. But there was really an enormous uh, spike in utility bills uh, this past winter. And some of it is attributable to uh, the increased cost of natural gas uh, at that time. But uh, we're finding that um, a significant portion of that uh, increase on your bill I uh, was not just uh, the increase in cost of, of natural gas. And so, uh, you know, we've been collecting information and testimony from all the stakeholders, and that's, a, that's an open investigation we're still uh, involved in. We recently, uh, you know, at the end of all of these inquiries, uh, you know, we, we produce a, a really comprehensive uh, investigative report on our findings, our, uh, you know, our, our, our opinions on, on those findings, and importantly, uh, legislative recommendations, what we should be doing to address uh, the problems that we identified. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've probably done, I don't know, upwards of, you know, 10 or so investigations during my time as chair. And these are months long uh, efforts. They're, they're very significant. We occasionally issue subpoenas when we need to. Uh, we have hearings, uh, we do document requests, uh, and so, and then we, you know, spend a, a large amount of time. I mean, sometimes these reports are over a hundred pages long. Mm -hmm. And one of our recent um, investigations, I uh, uh, about you know a year or so ago, um, we we looked into uh, the um, the hostile, really predatory practices of entertainment, live entertainment ticketing by uh, um, industry stakeholders. And so, Ticketmaster, uh, Vivid, some of the venues. Uh, anyone that's bought tickets to a concert or a sporting event, uh, Broadway knows that it's highway robbery. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we really dug into these practices. We produced a report. Uh, and then this year, uh, we, we put together um, and we were able to pass and we just signed to law maybe two weeks ago, uh, a really first in the nation uh, bill um, uh, of reforms. And you just pulled up the page there. Uh, to to ticketing and buying tickets to events that millions of New Yorkers do every single year. And the two big reforms that we got across the finish line that were enormous fights, uh, and both are first in the, in the country. We're the only state now that, that has this. Uh, one is called all-in pricing. So anyone that's gone on StubHub or Vivid or any of these sites uh, to buy tickets, you know, they go to the listings for an event and, you know, they see a ticket uh, a seat that they like, and they say, okay, I'm willing to pay that price. The problem is, you know, they, they click once, they go to the next page, and they put in their personal contact information, they click, they go to the next page, they put in their credit card information, they click, they go to the next page, they accept the terms of service and, and whatever. And then, you know, five clicks later, 20 minutes later, uh, at the <laughs> checkout page, you know, suddenly there's a $15 service charge and a $20 convenience fee and a $15 delivery charge. And now the price that you saw 20 minutes ago is doubled. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now once this new law takes effect in about uh, seven weeks or so, um, all in pricing will, will take effect. And that total price at the end with all the taxes and fees needs to be shown all the way up front in the listing before you make even a single click and waste your time over the next 20 minutes. And that not only will spare you that aggravation, but it will also allow consumers to better compare prices to different websites uh, because it's, it's impossible to compare prices uh, 20 minutes into every uh, transaction. Uh, you can only do it if it's up front and now you're gonna be able to do that and get the best price. And I think it will actually increase competitiveness uh, in the marketplace. Uh, so that's one. And the second, um, on the resale market, I, you know, it's, it's important to have context, in my opinion. And forever, we have not had context. What was the original price that was paid for that ticket that I'm now looking to buy in the resale market? Am I mm -hmm. getting a good deal or, or am I getting a bad deal? Is it marked up five times? Is it marked up 10 times? You have no idea right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of this new law, That'll take effect in, uh, in, in like I said, about uh, seven weeks, uh, six weeks actually. Um, there will now be required to be face value disclosure uh, on the resale market. So when you go to StubHub, 
I and you go and purchase, you go to purchase a, a ticket for resale, they will have to disclose what that ticket was originally purchased for. And then you can decide, even if, you know, if it's a bad deal and you still want to buy the ticket, God bless you. <laughs> but you deserve to know whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. And now you will be able to. Uh, there are yeah. some other smaller reforms. Uh, for example, we uh, prohibit now delivery charges if there is no delivery. Mm -hmm. If you're printing out the ticket at home, if it's emailed to you, uh, they can't charge you a delivery charge uh, any longer. Um, that's one of the many rackets uh, that some of these companies have been running for a very long time. And so there were some reforms that were part of my investigation that did not get across the finish line because in particular, the assembly uh, was not supportive. Um, and you know the industry writ large lobbied up. They've hired a small army of lobbyists to try and kill all of these reforms. Uh, but these two uh, in particular are really uh, big ones and uh, we'll build on them in the years to come, but they wouldn't have happened without the uh, investigation that uh, the committee that I lead did uh, about a year ago. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. And thank you so much for summarizing that for us, because as you said, these um, I know these investigations and even the bills, uh, they're, you know, hundreds of pages and not always um, accessible, um, you know, for for. Yep people to, to read and, and analyze, um, you know, so, so, you know, thank you again. Um, it's very valuable information and very good to know. Um, and I, so, and, and one last thing, well, oh, two, two more things, if you don't mind, I know we're running a little short in time, sure. but I also notice um, your efforts in renewable energy projects, which, you know, with gas projects, with gas prices and everything rising, um, so pertinent, so important. And um, I noticed that and I, you know, I'm happy to see that. And, um, you know, looking forward to seeing projects, um, you know, happening, um, you know, in the future um, and, and just wanted to give you an opportunity if, if you had any more details on that. Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, we, we passed a, a very significant um, new law in 2019 uh, that's a very aggressive climate change, sets very aggressive climate change goals uh, for the next uh, couple of decades. And, uh, and look, you know, we just, it, we just have to both from a financial economic standpoint and, and certainly from a climate change standpoint, uh, we have to be moving uh, in the direction of renewables away from fossil fuels. Uh, and that's in every sector of our economy. People just, you know, oftentimes think, okay, that's just power plants. Uh, but the simple matter of fact is that uh, our transportation network, in particular cars, um, emit a lot more pollution uh, as a whole, collectively, than our power generators do, than our power plants do. And so we, we really need to move in this direction across the board uh, in, in the coming years. And there's a lot of effort to do that. Uh, one bill, and this may be the bill that uh, you, you found in, in your research, a bill that I authored um, and that, uh, that passed this year, uh, would would require um, NYSERDA, which is really the, the state agency that oversees you know clean energy uh, policy and projects, um, would require NYSERDA to uh, to examine uh, the properties of uh, decommissioned fossil fuel power plants and put together a uh, a request for a proposal in advance. A, a proposal to replace those defunct properties, fossil fuel properties, uh, with uh, renewable energy projects. Cite those projects uh, at specifically those sites. And you know, I'm going to sound like a complete layperson here because I largely am in this space. But I, the thinking here is that I, you know, these sites they already effectively have the plugs in the ground uh, connected to the grid. And so, you know, let's transform those now useless, like Love It, by the way, uh, in Stony Point. Let's transform Love It, which is, yep. you know, just sitting there as a decommissioned, um, you know, defunct piece of property uh, into, you know, an, an enormous solar array or some other renewable energy site. Uh, and again, it has the connections to the grid already there from the Love It days. And you know that's what this bill uh, looks to do is get NYSERDA to prioritize these specific sites in advancing renewable projects. 
that's uh, and thank you again <laughs> center school presenter i'm sorry i sound like a broken record but all this information um you know is is amazing because you, you get diverted you know with the with the popular with the hot topics but um and forget about you know these these other places um that have kind of um, gone by the wayside and, and not not too many people know about but that is definitely a point um that we should look at and support um because you know solar uh, solar uh fields it, it, they could benefit everybody whether they're small businesses or property owners you know to get that renewable energy source out to everyone um and the last uh, the last thing your summer reading and exercise challenge um, from now through August, just so important. I, I uh, admittedly just noticed it, and um, are definitely going to get my kids involved. <laughs> and That's great. Uh, and I was was happy to see see that um, available for for the kids this summer. Yeah, th you know, this obviously it's nice to end on a um, on a feel good note here. I uh, and uh, you know, this is something that obviously doesn't have anything to do with you know passing a bill or the state budget. Uh, but my office does, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in, um, you know, really the community programming and, and events that uh, we're also engaged in. And we feel it's an important part of our job. And, you know, this was an, so we've always done a, a summer reading program. We expanded it uh, this year to include exercise. And uh, unlike previous years, we're actually going to make, you know, really a, a, a big deal out of those students um, who, who complete the challenge. I, typically, we just, you know, mail out a certificate, but this year we're going to have, you know, a big event with some pomp and circumstance and really celebrate uh, these kids that, uh, that committed to, to doing this good work over the summer. Uh, and so uh, this was an idea that came up from a member of my staff. Uh, they come up with a lot of the good ideas that come out of my office. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to that ceremony, uh, that event, uh, a couple months from now. And I, uh, and It'll be great to have your kids there. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Scoopas. Yeah, and absolutely. And after the pandemic and, you know, two years of, of no events and, and a lot of, you know, screen time and, and virtual meetings, um, it'd be nice to, you know, have an in-person um, celebration. Um, absolutely. Uh, so um, definitely is welcome and yeah, grateful for all of, all of the things that you've been doing and, and for, you know, giving us an update and, and summary of, of everything. Cause you know, it'd be impossible to read all that in, <laughs> in a, in a, in a short, in a half an hour or so. And this is much more friendly and, and understandable, a way of communicating all of these wonderful things that you're doing, um, in the Senate and, and we'll continue to do in our government, um, I'm positive. And like you said, um, I know that, you know, the New York Senate in general works as a team. So even though you're not, you know, in our district anymore, I know you will continue to be an advocate for uh, North Rockland. So I'm excited. Thank about you. Absolutely. <laughs> Anything else I missed or Tom? I... Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know if we have time. Just a, a few just very, very brief questions. And, you know, it might be something to follow up afterwards with uh, offline. Um, really two items. One, uh, you know, the North Rockland Chamber of Commerce has uh, been uh, together since 2014. Uh, but uh, oddly enough, and hopefully this isn't something that uh, everybody is uh, shocked by. I know the board knows, but we're actually our incorporation is the North Rockland Business Alliance. And the reason why is there was a corporation that was formed in 1946 or 47 called the North Rockland Chamber of Commerce. Um, and we've worked behind the scenes to try to find a way of getting that corporation either off the books in New York State, dissolved, because quite frankly, all of the original members have passed on. Um, I was wondering if there's a, a resource that we could speak with in New York State, uh, you know, any particular department to uh, try to find, uh, you know, some avenues to uh, rectifying that because it's, uh, it's uh, something that we'd like to get on the books as far as our official incorporation. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one. So uh, the Department of State would be uh, the agency that deals with those kinds of filings. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can certainly, I've never dealt with anything quite like that before, uh, but we can certainly, we have liaisons at the Department of State 
And so if you send over an email to my office uh, with some of that information you just described and any other you know, pertinent details that you think are, are relevant here, uh, we can certainly reach out to our folks there. And, and there's got to, there, there has to be a way in my mind, I mean, I shouldn't say that because yeah. even the, well, maybe, you know, maybe, seemingly, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, even seemingly the, the easiest uh, suggestions become difficult once you approach government. But I, it seems to me there should be an easy way uh, to sort of, um, you know, dissolve uh, the name of a, a group that doesn't exist anymore um, so that, you know, uh, a group like yourselves can, uh, can take on um, uh, that moniker. So, so, send over, so send over an email and we'll, we'll get to work on that. Okay, great. And the, the second uh, question is really related to up north. Uh, is uh, if you uh, if everything works out and you'll be representing Orange County, I, I imagine you'll still be representing Hi uh, the town of Highlands, Highland Falls, and such. Co correct. Yeah. So the new district is uh, very simply all of Orange County except for Newburgh and Montgomery. Okay, great. Yeah, because we still do some work with the Highlands Chamber of Commerce up north, yep. and. Uh, Believe it or not, I've stepped down from something. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm still on, on that uh, particular chamber, but we have a great president up there now. Uh, and I'd love to connect your office with them uh, yep. for perhaps great. a future meeting uh, when the time is right, of course. Sounds great. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Yeah, and that's all. Okay. I will see you all soon. I appreciate <laughs> uh, the opportunity and thanks for all the good work that you do. Thank you, Thank you. Sandra. Really thanks appreciate it. Bye. All right, and our next meeting, uh, I guess, Stephanie, would you like to mention about our summer soiree? Yes, absolutely. Um, July 27th, um, that's a Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Um, we will have our annual um, summer soiree at the Hudson Water Club. Um, you know, we, we've done this every year for as long as I've been a member, and um, it's always, you know, Weather, weather permitting, of course. Um, it, it, generally, we always get a nice, a nice day. Beautiful views, um, delicious appetizers, um, and and great networking um, with the board and um, other uh, businesses in North Rockland. So, spread the word. Um, you know, we, we it. it we we will you know charge a small fee um to cover um you know to, to to cover some of the expenses and it'll be a cash bar um but just a, a fun um, night out and um you know a little informal networking and excuse to get together and we also are generally our last board meeting of the uh, uh, our board meetings are the last Wednesday of every month. So this will be like a board mini meeting slash um, networking event. So looking forward to seeing everyone there. Awesome. So should we end there or do we, uh, does anybody else want to bring anything else while on recording? <laughs> it's not, all right, I'm gonna turn off the recording. Again, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, if anybody wants to hang out and linger afterwards, uh, I'll be on and I'm sure some of us will be on, but I'm gonna turn off the recording. And once again, thank you to Senator James Skoufis for yeah. being our guest <clears throat> for our virtual breakfast. Hi Chuck. Hello Tom, I just wanted to uh, thank you for inviting me to the meeting, Stephanie. And uh, you know, it, it, it's good to see all the progress that uh, the North Rockland uh, Alliance is accomplishing. Um, I will look at my calendar and, you know, see if I can participate in some of your events, if that's all right. Um, recently retired uh, from being the CEO at the Rockland County YMCA. Um, I have uh, a, a good colleague uh, who may like to attend some of the meetings, uh, Phil Dunley, he's the new uh, CEO. Uh, I've been volunteering with some programming uh, called YMCA Youth and Government. And, uh, you know, they go to Albany, they, they learn about how bills become laws and they meet students from all over. They're uh, really good leaders. And, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, some of those students might like to speak at one of your events. Um, <clears throat> so that's all I have to say for now. No, no, um, absolutely. He's, you know, yes. 
share this video with them because, you know, again, you know, hearing it directly from the source and, and you know, the way that uh, Senator Skoof has summarized, um, you know, everything that he's done basically for the past 10 years was amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to get that kind of um, direct uh, communication all the time. Um, so I think this was a great, you know, a great way to, to, to hear what, what a Senator does um, and, 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 you know, have him summarize and go through almost, you know, a lot of things that he's accomplished and how, um, so, so, and, and thank you for participating, Chuck. I know you've always been a big advocate in North Rockland, being from North Rockland. So thank you for continuing to participate in our events. Um, and, and, and we will, you know, definitely try to continue to keep the Rockland YMCA involved in everything we do as well. Thank you, Stephanie. And, uh, Thank you, you know, for volunteering in the community. Some of you may know or want to be aware that uh, Stephanie uh, serves as the treasurer for the Rockland County YMCA, and she's very involved of co connecting the YMCA and other not-for-profits uh, to the North Rockland Chamber. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. All right, we'll get, uh, I'm gonna turn off the recording again. Thank you everybody for being here.